all right so for now what i'll do is i will stay on with one single quote going forward we will take more real examples where the quote is going to be a two way quote so just as a hypothetical example the dealer quotes 60 61 so when he quotes 60 61 it's a two way quote okay this is known as the bid rate and this is known as the ask rate i think just a couple of terms later we will come over to this but for now i'll just stay on with one single quote which is rupees 60 is equal to 1 dollar right so that's what we understand by way of a forex quote a foreign currency quote next there are two types of quote that prevail in foreign currency market one is known as the direct quote and the other is the indirect quote so let's understand what are these direct quote would be when i am giving a quote based on this order domestic currency divided by foreign currency so what is domestic currency for us indian rupee what's foreign currency for us the us dollar so when i give a quote like rupee 60 per dollar now that's a direct quote So rupees sixty per dollar becomes a direct quote. From whose perspective? From the perspective of an Indian resident. From a U.S. resident's perspective, this is an indirect quote. Why? Because an indirect quote is one which gets defined as foreign currency by domestic currency. Okay. So for the U.S. investor, this is a foreign currency, and the base currency. happens to be the, uh, the 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 domestic currency from the perspective of the us investor so this would be an indirect quote for the us investor now what would be uh, uh, an example of let's say uh, 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 an an indirect quote for an indian where you place the foreign currency in the numerator and domestic currency in the denominator let me just take an example again an hypothetical one let's say two bangladeshi takas make one indian rupee okay now this is an indirect quote for us why because i have placed the domestic currency as the base currency and the numerator currency is the foreign currency so this is an example of an indirect quote from an indian's perspective and this is an example of a direct quote now is there any particular convention that the forex markets follow well not really because these are essentially the way we would quote so there would be some currencies which would be quoted based on direct quote there would be other currencies which would be quoted based on indirect quote it's more a matter of convention and convenience than anything else effectively please do remember whether i quote it as rupees 60 per dollar or as 1 by 60 dollar per rupee it doesn't really make any difference it doesn't really make any difference so be prepared in the exam in the questions to face direct as well as indirect quote do remember irrespective of whether it's a direct or an indirect quote quote the final outcome is not going to be any different so i hope you are clear with this let's move on look at the 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 the, the next concept and that is of the bid ask rate now let me come to it now i just indicated that in the forex market you have a two way quote and let me just stay on with this example rupees dollar the rate that is being quoted is 60 61 this is very very important so i would insist that all of you pay attention now when you approach the market and the market gives you such a quote what does it mean now this is known as the bid rate and this is known as the ask rate so this is known as the bid rate this is known as the ask rate the bid rate is the buy rate the ask rate is the sell rate so if i would want to buy dollars i repeat i would want to buy dollars that means when i approach the market and i tell them i would want to buy dollars how many dollars 1 dollar how much do i need to pay 60 or 61 now when i am going to buy dollars from the market look at it from the perspective of the market the market is going to sell dollars to you so the market would say hey the sell rate is 61 so they are going to sell me dollars at the rate of rupees 61 per dollar so please remember this is the buy rate 
and this is the sell rate and when we use the term buy and sell that's from the market's perspective so i would want to let's say buy dollars from the market in other words the market is looking to sell dollars to me it will sell it to me at 61 similarly if i would want to sell dollars to the market i have ten thousand dollars with me i call up the dealer and i say hey i would want to sell ten thousand dollars so kindly give me a quote now the dealer would say well i would look to buy dollars at the rate of rupees 60 per dollar in other words my ten thousand dollar would fetch me six lakh rupees right now you would say sir in this case of course it 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 it, it seems like as an individual, I'm always at a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the market and that is always the case. Now, if you look to buy a brand new car, you go to the showroom, you buy it, it might cost you around 4 lakhs. You bring it out of the showroom and you've, you've hardly garaged the car and then you change your mind, you want to go for a different model. You go back to the showroom and, and, and try selling it back to the car dealer for 4 lakhs, he would not take it for 4 lakhs, he might take it for 3 lakh 90, 3 lakh 80, so he would give you 10, 20, 30 thousand rupees less. In other words, the market will always sell things high to you and it will buy it back from you low. Okay, so one of the strong prescriptions that I always give to my students while uh, dealing with forex problems is that as and when they face a situation, which of the two quotes should I pick? Well, my clear suggestion mantra is you should pick up the quote which puts you at a disadvantage because the market will always give you that quote, will always apply that quote on the transaction which will put you at the disadvantage and will, will, will put the market at an advantage. And when I talk about market, it's, it's a whole lot of participants who are getting captured. So it could be the dealer, it could be a, a, a speculator who is on the other end, it could be a broker whom you are dealing with, right? So always remember, you will buy high, you will sell low because that's how the market would force you to accept. So if I'm looking to sell dollars, what is the rate which will be applicable? 60. If I'm looking to buy dollars, what is the rate which would be applicable to me? 61. All right, so always remember, put yourself at a disadvantage while picking up the coat. Now, so I'm sure some bit of the two-way coat you are, you are now beginning to digest. Uh, having understood this, let's say this is the two-way coat which exists in this particular market, 60, 61. There could always be currencies, pair of currencies for which the exchange rate doesn't exist. So let me take an example and what I'm talking about is this of course is the two-way code, the bid rate, the ask rate. What I'm talking about is a new term called the cross currency rate. The cross currency rate. So let's, let's spend a couple of minutes on this. So we will try to create some space over here. So let's see what cross currency rates would mean. Now, let's talk about a currency which hardly gets traded vis-a-vis -vis the Indian rupee. So you would say, uh, sir, uh, the, the Argentine peso, right? So peso is the currency which gets used in Argentina and it's not a very liquid, uh, highly traded currency. So you would say, well, I'm looking to export uh, stuff uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to Argentina and I'm going to get my receipts in peso. I would want to know effectively uh, one peso would be equal to how many rupees. So that's what you would want to know. And please remember, I'm just taking some random numbers. I would not clearly be very, very clued about what the peso US dollar rates are going to be. But this is just as a matter of example. So let's say the rupee dollar rate is uh, 60. So I'm for now going to use only one single quote. And let's say the peso dollar rate and this is US dollar rate is let's say 5 and this is just a random number that I'm taking and I would want to know how many rupees would make one peso. Alright, so this is what the question is. 
I have these two currencies, I am interested in finding out rupee per peso. Now this is known as the cross currency rate. So how would we understand a cross currency rate? Well, an exchange rate between two currencies, which actually does not exist. In other words, uh, directly it would be difficult for us to convert rupees into peso or peso into rupees because the pair currency exchange rate doesn't exist. So what would I do? I need to identify the common currency, which in this case is the US dollar. I need to identify the common currency, right? And that common currency becomes the linking point. So if I need to sell peso, I would convert my peso into dollars and those dollars would get converted in turn into Indian rupees. So let's see how would it go about. So I would be interested in knowing what effectively would one peso be equal to in terms of Indian rupees. Now let's look at the maths of it. Rupees per peso. Please pay attention. I have rupees in the numerator so I will take rupees per dollar and if that gets divided by peso per dollar you would say hey the dollar gets cancelled and I am left with rupees per peso. So this becomes the exchange rate that I am seeking. So let's apply the numbers rupees per dollar is 60 and peso per dollar is 5. So 60 by 5 gives me 12. So I would like to believe that 12 rupees make one single peso. So that becomes the exchange rate, the cross currency exchange rate. So you all that you need to do is just figure out the maths of it. I realize that this fraction is something that I can get by dividing this fraction by this fraction. The dollar dollar cancels and we are left with rupees per peso. Right. So this is an example of a cross currency rate. Let me try and take another example and let me use this part of the space. Uh, let's say, and I'm just taking an assumption, uh, the Japanese yen is not directly convertible into Indian rupee. Uh, for all that I know, I think now it is, but we will for once assume that it is not. Now, we know that the rupees dollar rate is uh, let's say 60 and uh, okay let me use another example let's say the rupees dollar rate and the dollar swiss franc rate okay i think that's a better pair so the dollar per swiss franc so let's call it franc is being given as 1.5 okay so these are the two rates available to me. I am interested in finding out rupees per franc, rupees per Swiss franc. How much is it going to be? Now let's look at the fraction. It's rupees per franc. Now you would say, sir, this looks very easy. I could take rupees by dollar, multiply it with the dollar by franc. Dollar dollar gets cancelled, and I would be left with rupees per franc. So. Let's apply and substitute the numbers. Rupees per dollar is 60. Dollar per franc is 1.5. And that in turn gives me 90. So I would like to believe that 90 rupees is equal to 1 franc. Correct? So we've taken two examples. Keep in mind one example where we were able to find out the cross currency rate. Focus on the board. We were able to find out the cross currency rate by dividing one currency with the other currency. Now there was this other example where we had taken these two currencies and we got the cross currency rate by virtue of multiplying these two. Okay, So there could be conditions where we would use uh, two rates which would get uh, multiplied with each other to get the cross currency rate and there would be situations where one would be divided by the other to get the cross currency rate. Now this looks pretty fine and I'm sure all of you are able to understand it. Things become a little more complicated when we start using the two-way code and we have the two-way code and then we are being asked to find out the cross currency rate. So let us see. So let's take up uh, a problem on cross, cross currency rate but where we are being given the two-way code. So let me take an example. Let's say we have the rupee USD and let's say the rupee USD is uh, 6061. So these are the bid ask rate. 60 is the rate at which uh, 
the market will uh, sell dollars to you and 61 is the rate at which or, or may, I, may, I, may I put it the other way 61 is the rate at which the market is looking to sell dollars to you and 60 is the rate at which the market would buy dollars from you right so if I have one dollar the market is going to give me 60 rupees if I would want to buy one dollar I'll have to give 61 to the market okay now let's take another currency let me take uh, uh, since we were on uh, Swiss franc and US dollar so we could possibly use that rate so dollar by franc and again I'm going to take the two-way quote let's say 1.2 1.3 so this is again the bid ask rate for uh, this pair of currency US dollar Swiss franc now I am interested in knowing rupees per franc this is what I am interested in knowing how do we get it so let's see now you would insist that sir we would get rupees by franc by multiplying rupees by dollar into dollar by franc isn't it so this is what you would do this is what we did in the earlier problem now problem is which of the two pairs am I going to take because if I multiply this with this I'll get one rate if I multiply this with this I'll get another rate so let's go the simple way so you would say sir bid into bid gives me rupees franc so that's fine so in that case I would get 16 to 1.2 I get 72 so that's easy and then we'll just calculate 61 into 1.3 and this would give me uh, let me come back to it again 61 into 1.3 this gives me 79.3 okay so these are the rates that I'm getting rupees per franc it's 72 79.3 okay now this will be known as the bid rate and this would be known as the ask rate it doesn't look very difficult so let's take another example I'm going to take another example let's say the rupee dollar rate is 60 61 all right and uh, the yen dollar rate is 100 105 so these are the two pair currencies that I'm using uh, rupee dollar 60 61 yen dollar 100 105 the bid ask rates now what am I being asked I am being asked yen per rupee yen per rupee is what I am being asked let's understand now yen per rupee is something that you would get by dividing yen by dollar by rupee by dollar because dollar and dollar would cancel resulting in yen by rupee now the problem is which is to be divided by what am I going to divide 100 by 60 105 by 61 to get the respective bid and ask rate well the answer is no the answer is no now the pair that I'm going to use please pay attention well one thing that I'm clear with is that I need to divide this by this to get the yen by rupee exchange rate but please pay attention I am going to divide 100 by 61 and I'm going to divide 105 by 60 to get the respective bid and ask rate I repeat I took 100 I divided it by 61 and I took 105 and I divided it by 60 unlike the previous problem where I multiplied 60 with 1.2 to get the bid rate 61 with 1.3 to get the ask rate so if you were going along with the understanding that bid into bid gives you bid ask into ask gives you ask that's not always true in fact when you get a cross currency rate by virtue of dividing one currency by the other currency it's always going to be cross division okay so you would going to divide 100 by 61 and 105 by 60 to get the bid and ask rate now having followed this mechanic I shall suge suggest you two ways of either trying to recall it remember it and again uh, 
another way to basically understand it. So in case even if you were not to follow this, I think you can basically transact your way through the two markets, through the two exchange rates to finally figure out what should be the bid rate and what should be the effective ask rate. Okay, so let me first go through the logical, uh, you know, the set of logical steps which in turn will indicate this rate. What am I trying to find out? I am trying to find out the yen by rupee rate. Okay, that means one rupee is equal to how many yens? So let's start off. Let's say I start with 105 yens in my pocket. So 105 yens is what I start off with. 105 yens would fetch me how many dollars? It would fetch me one dollar. Okay, now how would I very very quickly pick up uh, what is the number of dollars that I would get for any amount of yen? Well, if I have 105 yen with me, you will have two options within your mind. You would think 105 divided by 105, either it would give me one dollar or 105 divided by 100, it gives me one point something dollars, right? So these are the only doubts, that, that, that's the only doubt that would crop up in your mind whether I should take 105 or 100 to convert my yen into dollar. The simple, uh, uh, I would say solution or enabling uh, thought would be pick up that quote which puts you at a disadvantage. So when I divide 105 by 105 it fetches me one dollar, when I divide 105 by 100 it fetches me a little more than one dollar since I will always be put at a disadvantage by the market. That means 105 is the effective conversion factor. So 105 yen would get converted into $1. 105 yen would get converted into $1. Now $1 in turn, if you approach the rupee dollar market, would get converted into how many rupees? So you would say either rupee 60 or 61. So you have $1 in your pocket, you go into the rupee dollar market, you want to convert it into INR, you would either get 60 or 61. Please put yourself at a disadvantage. Then you would say, okay, I'll get rupees 60. So basically you started off with 105 yen and you landed up with rupees 60. So one of the rates, yen rupee rate that would effectively come up is 105 divided by 60. Okay. And this is the rate at which you would be able to convert your yen into rupees. So if you're looking to buy rupees from the market, this is the rate at which uh, the rupees would be available to you. So if I'm converting my yen into rupees, well, they would always charge greater yen for every single rupee that you would want. So this becomes the ask rate, right? Similarly, if I would have uh, started off with a different currency altogether, so you could have started off with, let's say, 61 rupees, 61 rupees would have fetched to $1 and uh, $1 in turn would have fetched to 100 yen and that in turn helps you understand that 61 rupees finally gets converted into 100 yen. So that, that is the rate at which you can sell your rupee in the market to fetch yen and that by virtue becomes the bid rate. All right, so that's of course a logical way. Now let me explain to you, how would I be doing it in the exam or while solving a problem? As in when I get a problem where I need to get the cross currency rate, how do I do it? Well, one way of remembering is when you're dividing one currency by the other, you should of course know which, which, which exchange rate is to be divided by which exchange rate. Having understood that, that it's a problem of division, always apply cross division. So out here, I took 100, I divided it by 61, I took 105, I divided it by 60. When it's multiplication, it's direct, when it's division, it's cross. That's one way of remembering it. The other way of remembering it is, I need to get the cross currency rate, the bid and the ask. Now we know the bid rate is always lower than the ask, isn't it? Now that should always be so. The bid rate should always be lower than the ask. It can't be that the market says that they are going to buy the car from me at 4 lakhs and they are in turn going to sell the car to me at 3.5 lakhs. If that were to be so, it would be an endless money making uh, process. I would always be buying the car from the market at 3.5 only to sell it back to the market at 4 
because 4 is the bid rate that's the rate at which the market buys the car from me 3.5 is the ask rate that's the rate at which the market sells the car to me so in this case the bid rate is greater than the ask rate leading to endless profit riskless profit for you so always remember market never gives you a riskless profitable opportunity and hence the ask rate would always be greater than the bid rate now that's one mantra that you should keep in mind that the ask rate would always be greater than the bid rate so when i am looking to get the cross currency rate by multiplying this with this tell yourself that the bid rate should be as low as possible and i'll get low as as low as possible by only multiplying low with low and i'll get an ask rate which is as high as possible trying to maximize the value by multiplying high with high so that's how the combinations play out look at this example i need to get the bid rate and i know that i need to divide this pair with this pair how do i get as low a rate as possible i take this the low number and i divide it by the high number so that ensures that my fraction is as low as possible right so i take the high number and i uh, sorry i take the low number and i divide it by as high a number as possible so that minimizes my bid rate how would i maximize my ask rate take the maximum number divided by the minimum number to get the maximum number because in case of a fraction when in case of a division when you divide high by low you get as high a number as possible when you divide low by high you get as low a number as possible okay so always look to maximize your ask rate always look to minimize your bid rate while trying to calculate the cross currency and automatically you will be able to pick the right quotes